What is going on guys? My name is Kenji, welcome back to the channel. I hope this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a final year uh, medical student and also a biomedical science graduate studying King's College London. And guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to not only survive, but also to thrive in biomedical science. And I really need to start making more videos about biomedical science, you know, get back to my original roots, which is all in biomedical science. And actually, all these tips that I'll be giving you is not just applicable to biomedical science, but you can probably apply these to any sort of university degree that you're actually in. So whether you're in medicine or biomedical science, highly recommend you guys use these tips. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the first tip that I have for you guys, which is probably the most important tip, which is to start revision for your exams early. Now, the difference between medicine and biomedical science, at least in my opinion, is that in biomedical science, we end up having 10 to 12 different exams right at the end of the year. Whereas in medicine, we often just have, you know, one practical exam and one written exam. And a second difference as well is that in biomedical science, I feel like during the year, there's a greater amount of information that you actually need to memorize for these exams. Whereas as medicine um, you know in the earlier years there's actually less content but obviously that builds up um, across the years so starting off with first year second year third year fourth year fifth year you need to be able to remember all of the information you learn in medicine whereas in biomed there's a great amount of content that you need to know but as soon as you sit the exam in first year you kind of forget it put it out of the way and then move on to second year and then learn a new amount of information for the second year and then a new amount of information again for the final year so a slightly kind of different you know ways to actually prepare for the exam but especially because in biomed you have a large number of exams right at the end of the year, I highly recommend you start your revision very, very early. Now, basically the mistake that I made in my first year of biomed is that I would honestly start reviewing the content that I learned in first year right before the exam period. Now we're talking, you know, two to three months, maybe max, maybe sometimes even, you know, one month or two weeks uh, where I'd actually start to review the content right before the exam. And that really, really made my life so much harder. I remember my first year, I probably didn't sleep for like two days in a row because I had so much content to get through to actually prepare for the exam. And again, the thing with biomed is that in your first year, you will have multiple choice questions, but you also have short answer questions. In your second and third year as well, the chances are, like me, you'll have essay-based uh, questions in your actual exam, meaning that you'll have to actually know the information really, really well and regurgitate it and actually apply it to whatever context you're in. Whereas in medicine, all of our exams, at least in my school, uh, from first until fifth year are all multiple choice questions. So I don't actually have to be able to know what I, I'm not, you know, I know in kind of great detail. So let's put things simple after every single lecture that you have in biomed, make sure you go home, actually read the content again, actually review the content and also make notes alongside and actually start to learn all of the content that you're, that you're covering in your lectures throughout the entire year and don't just save it until the end. Because if you did what I did in my first year, you'll end up with a huge amount of content to cover before you actually sit your exam. That's the first tip. Let's go ahead and move on to the second one. So the second tip that I have for you guys in biomedical science is to get to know your lecturers really, really well. The thing is in medicine, oftentimes you have, you know, different doctors that come in and out to teach you different things and you may only see them you know a handful of times throughout your degree whereas in biomed you often have you know one or two people teaching you for the entire kind of module and these people will not only teach you but also grade um, and mark your essays and all of your coursework as well so my advice in this context would be to really get to know your teachers on a first name basis if you can the reason being is that if you know them very well they'll be able to provide you with a huge amount of value whether that might be you know helping you to kind of explain the coursework maybe Maybe they'll also let you know about opportunities in the future, such as doing a research placement in their lab over summer. And thirdly, they may also be able to provide you with a really, really good reference whenever you go on to do whatever you're doing next after biomed. Now, to give you guys an example of how I actually benefited from knowing the lectures really, really well, in my second year, I knew a lecturer so well, they actually hooked me up with a research project, an eight week research project across the entire summer in their lab. And through that, they also supported me to get funding for my research. And that's just one way. The second way is I knew a lecturer who was in charge of the module and I was really struggling with my essays and they actually provided me with some one-to-one -one kind of feedback and help on actually writing the essay that I was really struggling with. And finally, one of the lecturers that I became really, really close to also helped me when it came time to actually apply into medicine. They actually gave me some really good mock interviews in preparation for medicine, which is so kind of them. So if there's anything that you guys want to do in biomed is to get to know your lecturers really, really well on a first name basis. And I promise you, you will have so much value from that. Tip number three that I have for you guys is to start your coursework as early as you possibly can. Now, the annoying thing about biomedical science is that if you're already studying, you probably already know this, but there's a huge amount of coursework throughout the entire year. You'll have essays, you'll have um, presentations, you'll have lab reports. There's a huge amount of coursework that you'll have to actually get through. And oftentimes you'll actually be juggling multiple you know, bits of coursework. You may have an essay as well as a lab report to write up. Now, honestly, my advice would be to as soon as you get to any sort of coursework, go ahead to the library and start researching the topic straight away. Start actually planning it out and try and get it done as 
soon as you possibly can. The reason being is that, as I said, you have a huge amount of coursework that will come in stacks. So maybe, you know, one week you might only have an essay to write. You think things are pretty chill. Then the next week, someone in a different module sets you a different type of coursework and things will honestly build up very, very quickly. So my advice to you would be to straight away, as soon as you get any sort of coursework, start writing it or at least start planning it as soon as you possibly can. And this especially applies to your dissertation. So the dissertation that you'll have in your final year of biomedical science is super, super important. To tell you guys about my personal experience, we actually started our dissertation doing research in the labs in January. But in December, before we actually started, we were given the actual name of the research project that we'll actually be doing for our dissertation. So what I did is that over the entire Christmas period, when I was actually home, because I had the title for my dissertation already, even though I wasn't already in the lab getting lab work done, I was already able to write the entire introduction of my dissertation, which ended up being around 7,000 words. So it was actually a huge amount of work done because I started early. So that when we actually entered the labs and started doing loads of lab work, I already had the intro done. All I had to focus on was the methods and everything else. Whereas my friends who didn't start early were really struggling to juggle the writing of the introduction as well as doing all the lab work as well. So my advice would be to start as early as you possibly can and you guys will thank me. I promise you that. By the way, if you guys have any essays in your coursework that you need to write and you need some help with it, then I actually have a full entire uh, how to write an essay masterclass which you guys can actually watch on Skillshare who are also kindly sponsoring the video. If you guys haven't heard of Skillshare yet, they're an online learning platform and community for learning new skills. Why I love Skillshare so much is they have a ton of actual classes on there from various categories from filmmaking to how to revise to how to actually study and produce essays. Literally any sort of thing that you want to learn is on there on Skillshare. I promise you guys that. One class that I recently watched which I really really enjoy is by Thomas Frank who has a whole entire class on how to actually increase your productivity and I highly recommend you guys check that out. I actually support Skillshare so much that I even made my own classes on Skillshare which you can watch entirely for free by clicking the link down below. The first class I have on Skillshare as I already mentioned is about how to actually write a first class essay. So I take you through the whole entire essay writing process to get a first class in your essays. I also have a course on how to get into medical school and as I said you guys can watch that entirely for free by clicking the link down below. If you guys would like to check out Skillshare for yourself then the first 1,000 people who click the link down below will get a free month's trial to Skillshare and I'd at least recommend starting a trial to watch my videos, watch Thomas Frank's videos as well. If you guys decide that you actually like Skillshare which I'm sure you will then you can sign up for the entire membership or if you change your mind you can cancel the trial. But that's Skillshare let's move on to the next tip. Tip number four that I have for you guys to survive by medical science is to actually get used to and actually get better at reading scientific papers. The reason being is that throughout your entire degree from first your second your third year of biomedical science and probably what you actually go on to study next you will need to read and be able to understand a huge number of scientific papers whether that's for revising for your exams or for your essays as well. So the tip that I have for you guys is to try your best to actually get good at reading scientific papers and the best way to do that is to read as many as you possibly can try and understand them and then try use them for whatever you're using it for. During my first year of biomedical science I actually didn't put that much effort into trying to understand scientific papers and that really really brought me down. What I started to do for my second year is to actually start to purposefully spend time trying to understand the papers that I'm reading for my essays or for my exams and really almost force myself to sit there in the library until I fully understand all of the papers that I need to read for whatever that I was doing. And that really made a difference because when it came to my final year, I could honestly skim through and read loads of papers really, really fast in preparation for my exams. And I know as a first year biomedical science student, this can be quite scary, quite daunting. When you first start reading super complex scientific papers, it can be quite scary. But my advice would be to try your best to not be phased by it, not be scared and actually spend time investing time to develop your skill and ability to understand scientific papers. And honestly, if you don't really understand these papers, there are tons of opportunities that you can take to make sure that you do. You can go and speak to your professor or lecturer after lecture and say that, hey, I've actually read your paper, but I don't really understand it. Could you please explain what you mean by this? There's also loads of workshops across the entire year that you can literally just drop in and have a chat with one of your seniors, one of your supervisors, try and get help to understand whatever paper you're reading. One super important thing that I did throughout my degree that really helped me out to get where I am today is doing as much as I could outside of my degree. Now, what I mean by this is that throughout your degree, of course, you have to attend your lecturers and do what you need to do for biomedical science. But there'll be loads of opportunities that you can take to actually develop your skills and also develop your CV. Because if you're doing biomed, then I actually assume that you'll be doing something related to biomed, possibly, you know, after you graduate. So this might be going into medicine. It might be going into dentistry, maybe further study like a master's, a PhD, or even starting a job straight away. And all of these opportunities will really look for something that you did outside of your degree. So to give you guys a few examples of what I did that really boosted my ability to be employable or move on to the next thing was firstly doing research. So in the summer 
over my second year on, in biomed, I actually worked in a lab. So I worked completely for free and I basically volunteered to uh, take on a project and actually got that project funded by a very big funding body. And that really helped me for my medicine application. As well as that, I also worked in hospitals. So I did loads of work experience in hospitals and also in care homes, again, boosting my CV. I also was an ambassador for the course. So I did loads of ambassador jobs. Um, I was a course representative. So whatever experience that you can get outside of your degree, such as everything I mentioned, or even publishing papers, anything you can do will definitely help you stand out from everyone in your cohort and will really help you on the next stage of your life when you move on to something new after biomedical science. So any opportunity that you can take, I highly recommend you guys take it. One key tip that I have to tell you guys as well is that if you're in biomedical science and you find something difficult, please, please ask for help. If you need help, don't suffer in silence. Go to the person who you know is in charge of what you're doing and beg them or ask them very nicely for help. And that will honestly make a huge difference. In biomedical science, there's a lot of unwritten rules. So for example, when you're writing an essay, you're not actually allowed to use a website to reference your work. There are also certain ways that professors and lecturers like you to structure essays. And these are small kind of things that really make the difference in your grades. And you can spend the time trying to learn these unwritten rules yourself, or you can ask someone who already knows how to do it. So to give you guys an example, the first essay that I ever wrote in university, I actually got 40% in, so I just about scraped the pass. And you can check out my reaction videos to that somewhere up here with a link above. But I really knew that I was not very good at writing essays after submitting an essay. So what I did is I found my supervisor and I asked them straight away, I think it was my personal tutor at the time, I asked them to really please help me better my skill at writing essays. And straight away, he took me through a bunch of unwritten rules I needed to know, such as the different types of scientific papers. He told me how to structure my essay. And just by making the choice to speak to him about this, that really changed the game for me. And I went from just about scraping um, to pass my essay to getting almost a first class in every single essay I did. And again, check out my Skillshare class if you guys want to know how I actually managed to do so. There have been countless times and opportunities where I would literally be so lost in my coursework. I'd really be like anxious and not know how to move forward my coursework. What I do is go onto my laptop, type a quick email to the lead and say, I know you're really, really busy, but please, is there any opportunity to just meet with you over lunch very quickly to kind of get more of an understanding of how to actually write this bloody essay? And nine times out of 10, they'll be like, yes, Kenji, of course you can come to my office and I'll spend half an hour with you to help you do better on your work. And I will literally go from knowing nothing about the entire essay to getting one of the best grades in the entire year for that piece of coursework just by asking for help. So the next tip I have for you guys is if you need help, please make sure that you ask for it. And the final thing that I wish I could tell my first year, second year, and even third year self is to know your limits. Now, when you go to biomedical science, there'll be so many distractions, you know, other than your coursework and all the lectures you have to attend and exams and stuff, you'll also have, you know, social opportunities, you'll have sports, you'll have, you know, loads of your friends wanting to go out clubbing and all this, you know, different kind of things. And I think it's really, really important to know your limits and to not do more than you actually can do. Now, for example, in my third year of biomedical science, I had so much going on. I had my medicine application to do. I had my dissertation. I had loads of coursework and obviously my final exams to prepare for. And that was an incredibly stressful period for me. And I honestly had to know my limits, which meant that I said no to going out. Any sort of thing that was after 9 p.m., like clubbing with my friends, I said, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm way too stressed. I have way too much work to get through. And my dissertation is due in a couple of weeks time. I cannot go out. And that was honestly one of the best decisions I've made in my life because I was able to do well in biomedical science and actually, you know, graduate with the, the actual degree title and the degree classification that I really wanted to achieve. So the last tip that I have for you guys is to know your limits. Don't do more than you can achieve. And of course, put your work and what you have to do for biomedical science above everything else. Of course, have a social life. Of course, have fun still, but make sure that you know your limits and hopefully you'll do well. And that is pretty much all the tips that I have for you guys on how to do well in biomedical science. If you guys like this video, then here are a bunch of biomedical science videos that you guys can watch that I've made in the past. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you drop a like down below, comment your opinion on the video. Also make sure you subscribe with notifications on to never miss another upload. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.